Hello guys, welcome back to Physics Well, I'm I'm Dr. Patil and in this video, I will be giving you a strategy to tackle medicine for the FMG exam. I know the exam is just around the corner and all of you are going through the fear of missing out topics from medicine. Medicine being the vastest of all subjects for an MBBS student, of course, no one can complete it thoroughly. There will be good areas where you have completed it well and there will be grey zones where your lack, your understanding is lacking and there may be absolute black areas which you are not even touched. And the time for the exam is quite less. So many of you may be confused how do I deal with this situation. So today I will give you one way of dealing with the situation. How you can make the most use of the remaining time and how you can strategize your examination day. Now as we go through the previous questions, we notice that the exam traditionally had been quite predictable. So as a teacher, I can predict from which topics majority of the questions are going to come from because that's what examiners have been doing repeatedly asking the questions from the same topic. P, Y, T as we call them as, right? Okay. So now let us understand where do you stand? Medicine is vast. We all agree. Now if you have covered it already, then I have nothing to tell you. You are on the right track. Revise the volatile points. There may be like factors which you feel are difficult for me to remember. Revise only those points now and then get into the examination hall. For example, like many of you may be struggling to rem remember the scoring systems. Chat 2 ds 2 as score, ABCD to score, right? PSI score. Many of you may be struggling to remember the numbers like AKI definition or the criteria, CKD staging. So those are definitely volatile. There is no concept involved, fact. So revise them. But if you have partially covered, like you have done some systems, you have not done some systems. What is the best way forward? So for the systems covered, whatever systems you have covered, my suggestion is revise the volatile segments from those systems. Like let us say I have covered nephrology, I have done neurology, I have done gastroenterology, but I have not done cardiology, I have not done rheumatology. So what is the suggestion for the nephro which you have already covered? Revise the volatile points. Concepts forget, but volatile points, what are the volatile points? Maybe the site of deposition of immune complexes in different types of glomerulonephritis. Difficult to remember or sometimes we get confused. So revise it. AKI definition, revise it. CKD staging, revise it. So the volatile things, revise. But what about the systems that I have not covered? What should I do? Like I just gave you an example that I have not covered, let us say, cardiology. So can I cover the cardiology in the remaining time? Of course not. No teacher is going to tell you to spend time trying to learn new things when the exam is just around the corner. So the best thing you can do is pick the extremely important high yield recurrent topics from the uncovered systems and only do those. For that, again, don't spend more than three to four hours for the medicine because you also have other 18 subjects to revise and every subject has volatile segments that you need to revise. So concentrate on revising the extremely high yield. For example, in cardiology, what is extremely high yield? JVP is extremely high yield. So you have to revise it. I mean, learn it if it's not learned. That might take 30 minutes, 40 minutes to memorize. Don't try to get into the concepts now. It will hamper or create confusions with your conceptual understanding of other topics as well. So instead, just by heart, memorize. JVP, abnormal waveforms, which conditions it is seen, memorized. Murmurs, which conditions they are seen, memorize. Right? So that's what I would say. The system that you have not covered, right? I would only say stick to high yield. Now comes the question. Okay, so that strategy is simple. If you are covered partially, revise the volatile from the covered systems and uncovered, only concentrate on extreme high yield and just go ahead with Ratamaro. But what if I have not covered most of the medicine? Can I get into the examination hall and uh, miss nothing if I have not covered medicine? Of course, nobody can say that because medicine is a major subject. You are expecting anywhere between 18 to 30 questions from medicine and you can't afford to absolutely miss it. But at least do something. Please do not get into the examination hall touching, like not at all touching some subjects, especially major ones. Right? So at least the high yield ones you should concentrate on. 
So what are the important high yield topics that I recommend that you should do somehow with whatever time available with you includes I will start with cardiology. So in cardiology, I only want you to concentrate on JVP. You are almost expecting one question. So if you spend 20-30 minutes, you are going to get one mark. Then from nephrology, I would recommend two topics to be covered. One of them is ABG. The second one is renal tubular acidosis. Renal tubular acidosis. If you ask me, sir, tell me one more. I can cover. I give 10 more minutes. Then AKI versus acute tubular necrosis. Okay. Then from rheumatology, what are the important topics you want me to cover? So simple from rheumat, you have SLA and rheumatoid arthritis. SLA particularly antibody correlations. So antibodies have a lot of correlations like this antibody is more sensitive. This is more specific. This is associated with drug induced lupus. This is associated with neuro lupus and those kind of antibodies and associations. And in rheumatoid arthritis, primarily focus on deformities. There can be potential image based questions and anyway, covered in ortho as well, right? Okay. Then what about neuro? So what topics you want me to cover for neuro, sir? If you ask me that from neuro, two topics are extremely high yield recurrent, recurrent questions coming from that. One of them is going to be GB syndrome. The other one is myasthenia gravis. If you have time, maybe you can concentrate on stroke management as well stroke management okay then what about gastro nothing much from gastro when it comes to medicine most of the questions are from the surgical side as such but one topic that has been recurring recently is celiac disease and tropical sprue Rest all you will definitely study from the surgery, including the IBD, right? So these are according to me extremely important topics. Huh? Respiratory we missed. Let me address that as well. So from the respiratory system, mainly I want COPD with respect to mainly COPD. Mein what is the important thing? First one is chronic bronchitis versus emphysema. Differences between chronic bronchitis and emphysema. And the second one is gold grading gold grading i'm not talking about the whole gold management of course it will take a lot of time you may not have that much time to give but at least gold grading of copd is something that i want you to cover right so these are the important suggestions from me how you can strategize let me summarize in one minute so if i've already covered most part of the medicine then i would recommend just revise the volatile topics but if you have partially covered in whichever system you have covered revise the volatile topics from those but uncovered topics stick to the high yield but if you have not covered anything, then just stick to high yield. You can't do everything from medicine for sure. And these are my recommendations as high yield topics, right? So don't miss them out. Hopefully you will be able to squeeze a decent amount of marks from these topics itself, right? All the best guys do well. And on the examination day, important tip from my experience of last six years of teaching FMG students, Every time exam happens, students come back and say, Sir, you told me, I remember, I had a little confusion in the examination, I had an answer before, then I changed it. So overthinking costs 5 to 7% of marks and that's a big number. So please don't overthink. Once you answer, of course, while answering, your subconscious mind has given you a gut feeling that this is most likely answer. In majority cases, that's going to be the right answer. So come back and change that answer only if Clearly your mind says, sir, this is a concept, this is a fact which I had missed and that's why I had answered it wrong. So now I know the clear, correct answer, then go and change the answer. Otherwise, just because that's what your mind is prompting, probably it is playing a game. So in that case, stick to the initial answer, most likely it will be right. So simple rule, no overthinking, right? And on the examination day, make sure if like previous day, be well rested. And if like it happens, I would, every teacher will say, take good rest the previous day, sleep well, but it, many a times you may not be able to get a good night's sleep. And in that case, if you feel not well rested, make sure you do get some caffeine to keep you active. Caffeine keeps your mental process active and hopefully you will be able to pull through the day, right? 
All the best guys. See you on the other side of the exam with the happy news.